that. Thanks so much for being here, folks. My name is Bill Barry, and I am the faculty coordinator for computer science at North Seattle College. And I am also a full-time faculty member teaching computer science. And I'm excited to be with you tonight to share what we've got going on in computer science. So again, thanks so much for being here and expressing your interests. I wanna take you through some of what we have to offer. There's a lot going on uh, in, in this area these days. And so we will go through all of that and we will give you a chance to ask some questions. We should have a few minutes to spend together afterwards. And so we will definitely handle your questions and uh, before we, we jump back into the main room. So can everybody see my screen? Hopefully you can show me by thumbs up if you can see what I'm displaying, yep, or say yes in the chat. Yes, thank you. All right, so you're seeing my screen, perfect. All right, so uh, just to let you know, some of our education these days is via Zoom, but some of it is not. So we are also offering some more in-person classes. So right now, I think we are aiming in spring to be about 50-50, something like that. So you will have often an option of choosing a class in the classroom if you'd like to be there, which is a lot of fun to be there face to face. Uh, we get a lot out of that time together, but we also offer purely online options and we offer some virtual sessions as well. So where possible, we give you all the options that you can. We know that you're busy. We know that a lot of you are working. So there are often evening sessions. Those are usually virtual. So we try to make this work for you <clears throat> where whatever you're doing, however you want to be educated, we will find a way to do that. So uh, let me get started in here. If you have questions, you can throw them in the chat or you can hold them and we'll, we'll take them in a minute, but I think we will have time. So what do we have? What is offered in computer science, uh, especially at North, but often these things are, are happening at other campuses as well. We have three programming courses. There are, there's an introductory programming course that uses Python, and then there are two more programming courses that focus on Java. Uh, these are parallel to and transfer to universities like the University of Washington. So our course series will transfer very nicely to these, uh, to these schools. We also have several associate's degrees actually, and these associate's degrees will transfer very nicely to various schools around the region. So there is a direct transfer agreement that has been published. We're getting it out on the website soon, and this will allow you essentially to go in, in almost any place you'd like to go in the state. Many, many universities support our, uh, our degrees, our, our transfer degrees. And so you can really go one of many directions if you start with us. We also have now a Bachelor of Science of Computer Science. That is a new program that started in the fall. And so that is another path. You don't have to go to a, another university. You can stay at our college and get this full degree if you like as well. So we can certainly talk some more about that. The programs are listed under uh, the website that's linked here. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's a great place for folks to start. And let me give you a quick example of, of why it's great. I have students who have taken one of our course series, uh, let's say CSC 142, they've taken the equivalent at University of Washington. And they said, I was in a class of 1000 people and the only time I ever got to speak to anybody was a TA in a small group session. So they sit in a room of a thousand people and their instructor is way up there at the front. And that's the only time they get to see their instructors. Our classes are 28 people at a cap. So you get in the classroom and you are there with me or with one of our good instructors. So we are face-to-face -face answering your questions. You are not a faceless person in the crowd. Uh, you are an individual and we are in a small enough group to be able to talk personally and directly. And to me, that makes a huge difference in how you can learn. So lots of good stuff here. Uh, we don't require any programming to start in our programming sequence. There is a small math requirement, which is intermediate algebra, uh, but you can get started with our courses pretty quickly and start to see whether computer science is something that you like. So here's just a quick overview, and I'll talk through a couple of options. Again, ask if you have some questions. Destinations can be, again, a program with us, like a bachelor program. Uh, you can go to many universities across the state, and some of these courses will also transfer elsewhere. So you really are in a great position. 
We have full-time faculty with industry experience. My background was with Microsoft. And so you're not only getting faculty members who know how to teach, but you're getting folks who know their stuff, right? They actually had to prove themselves in industry. So most of us are bringing that set of skills, which I think is really great. So when we tell you this is what we experienced in the workplace, you know that we're not just making up academic silliness. This is stuff that we know to be true from the workplace. Uh, we do great projects. Uh, my classes all have very interesting and real world projects. I can show you a little bit of one that's one of our uh, end projects in our third course, if you'd like, in a few minutes. Uh, we have a very vibrant computer science club. I love this, uh, what's happened with this in the last few years. Uh, they have a Discord server where there is a lot of interaction and people helping each other. There, has, there are club activities. There are Google. Uh, they also have a Google Developer Student Club. And so it is a very vibrant uh, thing going on with our with our clubs, which is great to see. Very involved students. Many of them are also participating in student government. Um, yes, and we will we will be recording this thing. And we can also, um, yeah, we can also do that. So uh, where do you want me to, yes. And they they said they're gonna share all these presentations with you, but I can certainly throw it in the chat uh, before we're done here, if you want this presentation directly, I'll be glad to do that, sure. All right. Um, also, this is great preparation for jobs, right? These are great courses to help you prepare for interviews and for things that you're going to do in the real world. Again, my view is that you should be um, you should be working uh, toward things that are going to be real world useful to you, not just academic stuff, but things that are really going to be useful to you in the real world. So job preparation type stuff. And as I also mentioned, we try to offer various modalities to work with your schedule. So there are online courses, virtual courses, and also in-person courses. My personal favorite, when we can sit in the classroom together and see each other face to face, there's something special about that that the virtual world can't replace. That being said, we have a great time and we make the virtual stuff work really well as well. We've had a lot of fun. So that is just a super quick overview of some of the things that are interesting going on with computer science at North Seattle. So what kinds of things are you going to learn? So you will learn basic programming. That's the key, right? Programming is what we're all about. We happen to use programming languages to accomplish that goal. So Python and Java are both uh, languages that are fairly still in demand in the market. They are really good foundational languages to get under your belt as a starting uh, programmer. Uh, we, again, most classes, full-time faculty, small class sizes, which are great. Uh, so I think I've said most of what, what uh, I wanted to say here from this slide, but let me just show you an exciting project that we are working on. Uh, this will be our last project in the third course that we're doing, and I just want to show you a little bit about something that you might be programming if you are in one of our courses. This is a graphical user interface that we created, and it's drawn the fractal that you see over here on the right. And by changing things here in the graphical user interface, you can make the fractal more detailed or less uh, detailed. You can change how opaque the center circles are in case you want them to go away entirely, or you want them to, uh, to show up a little bit more. You can see all of the fun stuff. And you can also choose from many different fun color themes if you'd like, or choose a different color for your fractal altogether. And it generates random colors and does all this fun math. And it's a, it's a cool project to bring all this stuff together. A little bit of math, a little bit of computer science, a little bit of design, and then just fun graphics too. And students really love putting this all together and feel a good sense of accomplishment in uh, making this whole thing work. So many real world projects. I'm a project guy, by the way. I don't assign like little tiny itsy bitsy problems that require you to write three lines of code. That's not how the real world works. The real world has projects for you. And so I want you to get practice working in projects and being comfortable in that environment, because frankly, that's what you're going to see in the world, right? So that's my personal belief about projects. All right. So uh, one nice thing also, you can start any quarter you like. So if you want to start in the fall, that's great. But you can start in the winter. You can start in the summer. And so we offer these classes almost every quarter. And you can start whenever you like. 
You can go part-time, full-time. On our website, we have paths mapped out for you that hopefully will uh, be helpful, but there is a part-time map and there's a full-time map, and you could basically make it go however you need it to go. And uh, also, again, I've mentioned we have transfer degrees and we have some degrees now on campus, including a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and a Bachelor of Applied Science in, um, in applied, you know, basically uh, application development. So you have a lot of options with us, right? There are many, many things that you can do. And of course, you can save a ton of money, as they mentioned, small classes, professors who know what they're talking about, and you can you can save a lot of money doing it. So kind of a, a nice win all the way around. So where are you going to go with this stuff? You get a four-year computer science degree. You are employable often right away as an entry-level programmer. These jobs are going to be over $100,000. Um, it's not trivial work, right? This is hard work, but it's fun work. And if you love computer science and if you love programming, you will love this stuff, right? You will enjoy what you do in these jobs. So good salaries across the country. Uh, you may hear folks say, yeah, well, Microsoft laid off some folks. Yeah, but they're also hiring some folks, right? There's always a demand for uh, good skilled entry level programmers and it's across the country. So kind of wherever you wanna be, there's gonna be jobs in programming. So it's good stuff. So I've said a lot of stuff real fast. But I am here to answer your questions. So what things would you like to ask? And I will I will throw this uh, this presentation in the chat. I think they will share them more broadly as well, but I will throw it in the chat. So uh, so those of you who who uh, need this, want this right away, you can download it from our breakout room chat. But what questions do you have for me about? computer science, our courses, what's going on with this, anything that you'd like to ask that would help you figure out whether this is something you might like to try, something that might be a good fit for you, what would you like to ask? You can type in the chat, you can say it on mic, whatever you would like, say it and we will talk about it. Anybody got any questions? All right, nobody, nobody's got any questions about how to do this, when to do this, what we teach, anything that would be helpful in you figuring things out. Yeah, Justin, go ahead. Hi, I um, actually had a question about the direct transfer agreement you mentioned. Yes. Um, you said that it's, in the process of being put on the website. Is this something new? It is, it is quote new. It's from 2016. For some reason, it just sort of came on the scene. Uh, but we have that map that's uh, that we've actually worked on and they're about to post it soon on the website. Uh, but our, our technical advisors know about it. So if you talk to one of our advisors, they will definitely let you know, uh, depending on where you want to go, which of these things will work best. But yeah, there's it's an amazing number of schools. Almost anywhere you want to go in the state, you will find that you know one of the paths that we offer is a very good fit for them. And our advisors are very smart about knowing, oh yeah, this school wants you to take more of this. You ought to take these electives if you're going there. Our advisors are really, really good at that stuff. So oh, okay. they will know exactly and be able to share those plans with you. I highly recommend you work closely with our advisors because they will make sure you're on the right track based on where you might want to go. Oh, okay, so it's been implemented since 2016. Oh. Yeah, it's been it's, yeah. It's, it's actually it's, been out there. it's just not necessarily uh, well documented on our site yet. Okay, all right, no worries. But our advisors Thanks. know there's there's like three different ways or four different ways, and so they will know exactly if you're thinking about these couple schools. They will advise you very well at how to prepare for that, and then you'll work with the transfer folks at both schools to make sure that you got everything you need. But yeah, it's a it's a great agreement that that really is very widely accepted, which is fantastic. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, Justin. All right, Avery. Um, 
Yeah, there. Uh, what you want to do if you're interested in video games, you definitely want to get some some good, uh, solid programming under your belt, and Java is as good as anything else for that. You probably want to get some C in uh, at some point too, but start with the foundation of some uh, a really strong programming language that it, I would consider like a grown up programming language, either Java or C, C plus plus. Get that well uh, under control. Also, take some math, right? Take take some math and get into the graphics stuff uh, because you start getting into graphics in our courses and you want to really uh, grab onto that because obviously that's, that's an important direction for games. Um, so another one is uh, what math classes. Uh, so this is a really interesting uh, uh, Hobak. I hope, hope I'm saying that name correctly. Sorry if I'm not. Uh, but the... Um, Math class in, in our Bachelor of Science, this is a really interesting thing in that when we designed this program, it was designed for not requiring too much high-level math. So you can get into that program, and I don't believe they even require Calculus 1. I think they are good with pre-calc 1 or 2. So um, you don't even have to have Calculus to get into that program. Now, if you're going to go into some field that you know is going to be very math heavy, of course, we recommend you take more math. It's good for you, right, if you're going to be in those fields. But our BS uh, degree in CS is, uh, is a different one. It's unusual in that it does not require that level of math. So, yeah, it's a great question. Okay, it's unusual in that respect. All right. What else, folks? What other questions do you have? What can I help what can I answer that would help you figure out whether this is something you might like to try? Yes, please go ahead, Lee Wen. Hi, Bill. My name is Lee Wen. Uh, for my question, um, I was just wondering, for the certificate exams that we want to take, um, will we have resources where we can get it for a lot cheaper than you know um, retail or like the 10% discount that usually people get? Yeah, in terms of certificates, uh, you're talking about like boot camps and certifications in, uh, you know, in, in some of the industry stuff. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Yeah. For yeah. example, if I want to take like a like a Microsoft Azure AV900 um, certificate exam, yeah. will I be able to get it, get it for a lot cheaper if I were to yeah. participate in a class like that? I'm unaware of any special thing that we have, but there are folks who, like especially in the IT area that deal with networking, they are in some of those things, and I would be able to refer you to somebody who would probably be able to answer that question better, because uh, there is a whole set of things under IT that's networking, and it's, uh, and it's cloud computing and stuff like that, so those folks may well have that sort of in where you can you can do that. I'm unaware of it personally, but I know they will know. So chat with me after, and I can point you to someone who can probably uh, answer that question. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, so Avery, uh, we typically require Math 98 uh, to get into our beginning programming course. So that's typically the one. I would have to look at what ABE 98 uh, is, but typically Math 98 is the, the requirement for CSC 110. So from my understanding, that would be the, that would be the best path. Um, yeah, and Caitlin, uh, international students do not have to take any other courses before they take, uh, they take our program. Uh, we are expecting beginners in our, in our courses, so that's perfectly all right. So um, yeah, we are we are not uh, requiring any special things before uh, entry into the program. Now our programs, depending on what you're what you're aiming toward, some of these programs will have you know varied things. You'll take English courses. You'll take you'll take you know some other kinds of uh, visual and arts, and you you have some options around humanities. So uh, depending on your path, there are you know a set of courses that you want to take, and the student can pick sort of which things they think would best prepare them. Uh, but in terms of uh, specific requirements, we don't have anything that we say you must do before that, except to get that one math requirement in. Right, and William, uh, this is a uh, this is a great question. Uh, AP Computer Science. If you've taken the AP uh, test, you can place into a higher level of course. So depending on your score on an advanced placement computer science test, you might be able to bypass 
uh, one of our courses and go directly into others. If you make a three or four on the AP test, I think that places you typically into our CSC 142. If you make a five on that, then you can consider being placed into our CSC 143. We just want to make sure that you're well prepared and that you have the language basics, uh, but usually that works out okay. You've got a, a great AP uh, computer science score, you can uh, advance, right? You can waive some courses and get into a higher level course. Yep, thanks for asking that. All right, great questions, folks. What else? What other things can I answer? What else would you like to chat about in the few minutes that we have remaining here? I hope some of you will consider uh, taking one of our courses. Uh, think about popping in one quarter. If it's something that you might think you're interested in, I hope that you would take the CSC 110. Even if you're not planning to be a programming major, I think programming can be a life skill. If you understand a little bit about it, there are various jobs where it can be helpful. It can be helpful working with other kinds of software like Excel and other kinds of applications. There just are going to be places in the world where a little bit of programming may come in helpful to you. So I think it's not a bad sort of skill set to have, even if you don't want to do it full time for a job. Um, yeah, um, Avery, it's an interesting question. Uh, programming languages across the world, the languages themselves tend to be in English. So the keywords themselves are always the same. So that's nice that you don't have to learn Norwegian to program a Norwegian program. Uh, so yeah, you can you can always uh, use the English keywords. And then above that, then of course, you'll be programming the UI in another language. That takes some other skills, but the languages themselves are, are always English, which is sort of interesting and strange, right? So um, yeah, this can be uh, after high school, but it also can be running start. I have a lot of running start students that come through my classes and those, uh, and those students often do really well, right? Often they're very motivated. And I've had some really excellent students from running start. In fact, the president of our computer science club is a running start student. And so I have to remember that sometimes like, well, this guy's really advanced. He's gone through all these courses. He's running the club. He's very helpful. He's helping students, blah, blah. He's a high school student, right? He's a running start student. So you can, you can do it uh, either way that you like, whatever makes sense. Right. So Rowan, yeah, interesting uh, differentiating, uh, <clears throat> differentiation. Computer science is almost completely about programming, about computer programming. Information technology will focus a little less on programming and more on technology, networking, web design, um, databases, right? It's more about those specific technologies um, that, that uh, you know, rather than just the programming aspect. They will touch on the programming aspect, but the depth of what they do is really focused on other kinds of techs. Network, uh, excuse me, networking, database, uh, operating systems, right? It's sort of a, a little different angle. And they offer certifications as well in things like networking and, and things like that. So those are, yeah, a little bit of a, of a different program. If you want to go in, for instance, computer support, or uh, you want to work in maybe, you know, a database environment, maybe you're thinking about a database administration. They also have some, uh, some data science uh, pieces that are in place on that side. So yeah, it's kind of just a matter of what you're super interested in, right? You are very welcome, Li Wen. Any other questions for, for us folks? All right, well, I look forward to seeing some of you in our classes. I hope that you will uh, pop in and give it a shot. I think you'll have fun. Uh, my students usually seem to have a, a, a good time. We have great time together and we learn a lot and, uh, and get to know each other. Uh, I have fun teaching. That's why I do this, right? I could be making a lot more money working at Microsoft or another place like that, but I have fun teaching. This is what I love to do. I love to be in the classroom with you and see all those light bulbs going on and you putting the pieces together. That's one of the big joys in my life is seeing you succeed at what you do. So I hope that you will uh, consider uh, trying these things out if it's of interest to you. And I will uh, I will end it here unless uh, there are any more questions. And I will thank you again for attending the session. I hope you got some useful pieces of information out of it.
Any other quick questions then, folks? All right. Well, I will stop the recording and I will release you if you want to go back to the main room. I guess there'll be a some sort of summary wrap up thing going on in a few minutes. So uh, thanks again for being here and good luck with whatever academic pursuits you have. And uh, I will see you back in the main room. Thanks for being here, folks. You're very welcome, everyone.